Hey, everybody, it's Gene Marks, and welcome to another episode of the Hartford Small Visit Ahead podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We are talking taxes today, business taxes for all of us that are running our businesses. I have got with me today Mitch Gerstein. Mitch is a Mitch, you're a tax director, correct? It is Daner? Um, well, I'm a senior tax advisor. Senior so, tax advisor. You know, because, you know, I, I joined the firm after taking early retirement from a national firm. So. Got you. So, senior tax advisor as in, at an, is Daner and Co., which is based outside of Philadelphia as a regional firm, although accepts clients from all over the universe as well. Uh, Mitch and I have known each other for a number of years and have done um, presentations and events together. Uh, plus, Mitch, is, Mitch and his firm are, are my firm and my family's uh, tax advisors. So, I rely on Mitch you know, for advice. So, whenever I talk to him, it's like I'm getting some free. Uh, I don't have to pay Mitch's exorbitant hourly rate. I get all this It's not exorbitant. Okay. Um, so, Mitch, let, let, let's talk. Uh, you know, the, our audience. I told you before we started recording is uh, you know business owners, um, some independents and freelancers, but really in the in the Hartford small visit community, a lot of people that are running or working at employer owned businesses. So, you're talking to your clients now. We're in 2023. Um, I, I've got some specifics to rattle off, but before I get specific, let's get general. Um, what tax advice are you giving your business clients for for this year? What what are some of the things that you're telling them to be focusing on? Well, what we're what we're focused on is is making sure that we can uh, get a handle on 2022 because that's really mm-hmm. important to be able to gauge you know various tax strategies that uh, will. Uh, impact 2023. Um, generally speaking, uh, retirement plans are one of the things that we we uh, t- we like to talk about at the beginning of the year because mm-hmm. it's so much more difficult to. Uh, we can still do it at the end of the year, but you know it it, it uh, adds a lot of value and gives us time to look at all of the uh, different options. So let's let's dig into retirement plans a little bit, and to the extent that you're familiar, because it's relatively new legislation, the SECURE 2.0 uh, legislation, which just passed in December. Um, and, and there are certain things that aren't even taking effect for, you know, over the next couple of years. But um, give us some of your thoughts on retirement plans for a small business. What should we have? Uh, how should we be maximizing the money we're putting away for retirement? Right. So, you know, there are, um, everyone knows about the 401k um, plans for employees, uh, even the owners, you know, can take be taken advantage of that, and they should be maximizing those contributions uh, for 2023. Um, the contributions um, combined between the employee and the employer um, with certain types of retirement plans can be up to sixty six thousand dollars. Plus, if you're uh, over age fifty. Um, you can even put more money away. So um, it's really important to be able to, at the very least, um, make sure that you're putting the money away as an employee, which is $22,500 plus right. another $7,500 if you're eight, over age 50. And then the, the rest of it comes from a profit sharing plan. If you're really success, you know, if you really have, a, have had a great year uh, and you um, you can look at other retirement plans like a cash balance plan. A cash yeah. balance plan can allow you to put away up to two hundred sixty five thousand dollars. So you know it's it's uh, it's amazing how a lot of businesses um, you know they talk about it, they just never take those steps. And then, like I said, at the year end, sometimes it's just run, you run out of time. Yeah, the Secure two point legislation that passed at the end of last year is actually going to provide a lot of incentives for businesses. Uh, to to put money away, there's significant tax credits, right, for businesses that start up 401k plans. Right, there are 401k plan credits. You know, um, uh, I I don't, they're not, I don't think they're they're as applicable for 2023 just yet. Um, but uh, that's why I sort of didn't really cover that piece of it. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I think that um, um, the 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 most important thing is if you don't if if you don't have a retirement plan, this is the time to do it. This is the time yeah. to, you know to, to start talking with your tax advisor, start talking with your financial advisors, and just start seeing um, what type of retirement plan um, would work best for you. Because the opportunity to defer the income and take the tax deduction now um, is you know one of the few remaining legal tax shelters. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, Mitch, you, so I, I have a, a SEP, a single employer pension plan. Um, we get from your firm, you, you basically tell us based on the limitations of, you know, the income of my business or my income, what, what we could put away into that plan. And we have it set it up with a separate investment, you know, firm. Cool. Um, I don't have like a Roth plan, any kind of Roth, like a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k or anything like that. Um, should I, as a business owner, and just for, for all of you guys watching and listening, like my company, you know, very, very small business, but, you know, would still have a, you know, some eligibility for a Roth plan, I believe. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the Roth plan yeah. is, you know, it's it, the, um, you know, Roth is non-deductible. So, right. you know, um, I just had this conversation with a client yesterday and we walked through, um, you know, the different options. Um, yeah. I, I, um, I am a believer again, it's really, um, a, an individual decision and really, um, some of it's tax, but some of it's financial over the future. Um, you know, as you know, with a Roth, uh, the money that can goes, goes in there, um, is not tax deductible. Um, you right. hold it for five years and later on in life, when you pull the money out, um, whatever it grows to, the appreciation is tax free. You don't have to yep. pull it out. You can let it run for multiple generations and just, you know, personally, I'm not as much of a fan of, of Roth because I like those tax deductions. There aren't many tax deductions that actually will pay for the amount that you wind up giving your employees. Right. right. So, I, you know, that, it's just, you know, just, um, but again, Roth has, you know, some benefits that are in the future, not currently. Great advice. Um, you and I can have a debate later off. The other reason why I was thinking about Roth also is that, you know, Markets are down, so theoretically, you know, markets, you know, markets tend to like turn around. Um, so, in a down market time, to put money into a Roth, even if it's after tax, if you know, right. ultimately it's going to go up. It'll grow tax free, but uh, it's again, if you're a business owner, even an individual, uh, a Roth is something you should be talking to your tax advisor about because it might be even more beneficial now. Right. Again, everyone has it. You know, comes from it from a different perspective, and right. tax isn't the only driver. Good, 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 good. Um, okay, let's talk about some other things I think business owners should know about this year. Give us your thoughts on accelerated depreciation. I have a lot of thoughts on that. So, um, <laughs> some of them even good. Yes, yes. So, you know, accelerated depreciation. There are um, there are three. I would say three areas that I I would um, include in that. So, there's something called Section 179 expensing, uh, which has been around for many, many, many years, and it gives you the ability. Um, to uh, when you acquire um, equipment um, to be able to um, deduct uh, for 2023, $1,160,000. There's certain rules that uh, you have to be profitable. Um, and, um, and, and every year it's indexed with inflation. And so there's section 179. What's really has been um, very advantageous is what's called bonus expense. Bonus expense has no dollar limitation. Mm -hmm. It's a percentage limitation. And up until the end of 2022, the percentage limitation was 100%. So 100% of used and, and new um, um, equipment um, purchases, whether it created a loss or not, uh, there were no limitations. Um, this came from the uh, the increases to 100% came from the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, uh, which um, became law in, in 2018. However, beginning in 2023, uh, that percentage of 100% uh, for the next, um, until, it's, uh, until it expires, um, ratchet is down to by 20%. So in 2023, it's down to 80% and so on and so forth. Um, so you have to look at both now. Um, it used to be that they were, you know, a million, you know, a million dollars, a million dollars, right? So it didn't really matter. Um, other than if you um, were profitable or not, that's probably one of the biggest limitations, but now you may get, wind up getting more if you take section 179, because each year thereafter, 80, 60, 40, 20, zero. Um, uh, and as we know, that could change with tax, you know, with Congress over, over time. Um, so, so that's, those are two, two areas. But the third one is cost segregation studies. So cost okay. segregation studies is, is taking some, uh, a, a real estate that you may have bought years ago. And, you know, commercial real estate is 39 years and 
Um, that's a really long time to write off um, your building. But with a cost segregation study allows you to look at the components like plumbing and electrical and, um, and, and other items that don't really have that useful life that you can se- segregate from the real mm-hmm. estate costs, recalculate those depreciation, take in consideration bonus, um, five years, seven years, um, as well. And, uh, you recalculate from the time that you uh, place it in service and you get mm-hmm. to take that entire catch up deduction in the current year that you do the study. Wow. So let me get make sure I'm keeping clear on, on some of the takeaways here because this is great Making stuff. notes for yourself, right, Gene? Yeah, I am. I mean, really, not, we, I don't even need to have capital equipment, but I have clients I can talk to about right, this as well and, and push them over to you. Um, but, you know, so you know, if, if you do have a building or a property, some people think that like, oh, well, I have a property. So, you know, the, the rules have to you know depreciate that over 39 and a half years when really you could be segregating out some, you know, the, the, like you said, the plumbing, electrical, other things that are parts of that building, you might be able to not only depreciate them quicker, but you can have a catch up and depreciate right. all that like right away. Uh, so that's huge. And I think a lot of business owners might not realize that and they're missing out right. on those big deductions. Yes. Um, when it comes to depreciation, there's the section 179 d- d- deduction or, there, or there's bonus right. depreciation. Right. Um, I guess the takeaway there is you want to talk to your accountant to see which makes the most sense for you this year, right? Uh, because there are limitations to both, and of course the section one seventy nine is now starting to be limited. Oh, uh, the bonus, but, the bonus so is being bonus limited. Bonus is being limited. Right. Excuse me. That's okay. Uh, each year until it expires. So that's a conversation you should have for your accountant. Right. And then actually going back to what we were talking about previously, uh, retirement plans as well. Roth is important that we should be looking into as well as. Um, making sure that we're maximizing out on our, our individual 401ks, right. uh, both from an employee and employer standpoint. Right. I just want to add the cost segregation study. You know, they, yep. they actually, um, there's, you know, been around for a long time. So they, you know, there's a general um, um, results, you know, it's, it's not applicable to every situation, but 20 to 40% of the costs could qualify to be recalculated at, and, and you know, have a, a accelerated write-off instead of 39 years. And is um, the cost segregation, is that a new thing or is that part no, of it's the- it's been around for a while. It was a, it was a uh, tax court case uh, of a hospital um, okay. who has to, you know, in order to, for a hospital to run, they require certain um, yeah. electrical systems. And yeah. as long as you um, have this study, uh, it's been, uh, IRS has um, um, you know, essentially blessed it. Um, and of course, it's it's like anything else. Um, you know, there's a cost benefit that you have to do the analysis. I mean, if you're going to be selling the building in two years, Ideally, that probably isn't going to make sense, sure. but you know, the present value of being able to accelerate that depreciation in one year, especially sure. if you had the building for 10 years. Yeah. I'm all about that. And I'm assuming that's got to be a talking point for you when you're going out to clients this year, Absolutely. like you're bringing that up. I can think of one client in particular that you and I share. Yep. Uh, We've already talked to him about that. Yeah, very yep. interested. Yep. In- we used to ask for the general ledger. Now we ask for the general ledger and their fixed asset schedule. That's fascinating. Okay, great. Um, all right. Next topic when it comes to employer or, or tax from a business standpoint, the Inflation Reduction Act, Mitch, right? Without drilling down into the weeds, yes. is there what's in the Inflation Reduction Act, you know, big picture things that come to your mind that impact you know, a business owner that they should be asking their accountants it's about? very specific, right? It's okay. very industry driven. So... There are now incentives to um, for energy, you know, um, more robust tax credits for um, energy credits um, and for um, electrical electric vehicle tax credits are are now much more in favor. And you know, um, if you're a builder in commercial buildings, there's tax credits for energy efficiency. So. Um, there are many of those types of credits that are that were in the Inflation Reduction Act, four hundred and thirty seven billion dollars of mm-hmm. of um, new spending and, and tax breaks. Um, and so, um, you know, that's you know, it's for most businesses that we're finding so far, um, those tax credits are not as prevalent. Interesting. But if you're in the right industry. It could be. And these are what types of industries, environmentally, you know, green industries, people right. developing. Right. Builders. 
right? Yeah. Because they're the right. ones that, you know, are that, you know, because it, it, you know, um, solar and, and wind energy and, right. uh, I mean, it's just fossil fuel power plants and right. you know, things of that nature. Okay. A um, couple of tax credits I want to ask you about as well, just to make our audience aware of them. Okay. One is the work opportunity tax credit. Uh, it doesn't expire until 2025. It is a tax credit co- that could be as high as $9,600 right. for an employee. Um, if you hire somebody, I think if they're out of the military, if they're out of prison, if they're off of welfare, if they're right. long-term unemployed, long-term give, give us your thoughts on that. And do you, do you see your, do you, I mean, I, I, I feel like not enough business owners even know about the existence of this tax right, credit, right. which could be a big benefit. And what are your thoughts on it? Right. Well, you know, they, they also have to, a, a lot of those categories, um, um, then there's, there's 10 uh, different groups that are targeted. Mm. Um, you know, it's also um, the t- employees who tend not to stay in the company. So that's one of the reasons why that, you know, it sounds, excuse me, it sounds great, but you know, mm-hmm. you have to, um, there's a two year period um, from the time they get hired. And so, for example, uh, you know, a, a nursing home, um, you know, sounds great. Got all these employees and, and, and next thing you know, cause it takes some time to get credited and, um, you, you, um, um, and there, obviously there are costs for doing that. Um, you know, it, in the right situation for the right, uh, workforce, right. Um, it is, um, it is, um, real beneficial. Um, but it's not, um, and I've been practicing for a long time and, you know, there aren't that many clients that I've seen over the years that are, you know, the good candidates, you know, and so, and, and there's a lot of administration that goes into it. Interesting. Okay. Um, speaking of administration, another tax credit that takes a lot of work to do. And I know that it, it's a specialized one is the, the research and development tax credit, the R&D tax credit. And I'm wondering, um, you know, again, that mutual client that I mentioned earlier that that we have, uh, they they take advantage of the R and D tax credit, and they're a manufacturer. Right. I, I I do feel that a lot of businesses are not aware of the fact that if they are doing, you know, the the the, the definition of R and D is is fairly general enough that they they might be eligible for it, um, but then like like the work opportunity tax credit, there's a lot of work and right. resources yeah. needed to claim it to right. see if it's even worth it. What are your thoughts on the R and D tax credit? Well, the R and D tax credit, um, uh, the um, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act that um, again came into law in 2018, it had to pay for some of the, the deductions that, that came mm-hmm. about it. And one of the mm-hmm. things, which was a time bomb, which is now hit, um, which I actually spoke to the client about, mm-hmm. that we mutual client about today, um, right. is that um, that the research and development costs itself. Are were normally just trade of business expenses. So you just deducted those expenses, and then if you qualified for uh, a study, um, you got this credit on addition to that. Well, um, beginning in 2022, um, those expenses now have to be amortized over five years, and um, it's a half year the first year. So mm. if you have a million dollars of expenses mm. to get a hundred thousand dollar tax credit. Mm. Um, you now have to add back to your income nine hundred thousand dollars. So right. nobody was talking about this until uh, they saw. They thought that at the end of the year, Congress um, in the last legislation was going to um, resolve that and defer it. And so now, uh, if you Google R and D expenses, it's unbelievable the amount of information the AICPA. Uh, our regulatory body just sent a letter last week to Congress and, and pleading with them um, because um, it sounds great. Like you brought it up, right? It sounds great. This R and D tax credit, but yeah. now the, it, it doesn't even matter if you didn't take the credit, those expenses um, are now amortizable, just like software costs that you develop. Yeah. They're no longer, ex- you can no longer expense them. So anyway, I know that's not the direction you were going with that. I'm no, just letting, those yeah. those clients and businesses yeah. um, who are yeah. listening in today um, yeah. know that there is. Um, we're hoping a final note about that is you want to file an extension because you okay. want it. You want because everything I'm hearing, it's going to get fixed. It's no guarantee, but it's going to get fixed. Last thing you want to do is start amending returns um, regarding the, this issue. So you may have to pay more, 
but you amend and by hopefully by the summer, they'll find a tax bill that will resolve this and kick it down the road. Just to be sure I'm clear, because I'm a little fuzzy. Um, if, if you want to file an extension, if you have used the R&D tax credit before or plan to use it, or if you have R&D expenses. In R&D general, expenses. Right. Correct. Because those R&D expenses are, are right, now right, having to be amortized right, over five right, years. Right. Which right. is a huge impact on so many companies right, right now right. Um, that perform these kinds of work. Okay. Uh, so whether or not you're applying for the R&D tax credit, right. um, if you have R&D expenses, this impacts you. Yes. Um, I'm going to have to write about that. Um, okay. Yeah, we could talk about that, but it's it's not good for small, it's not good for business. That, that's for no, sure. it is not. That is not. <laughs> okay. One final question and I'll let you go. Um, t- tell me about your uh, the IRS this year. I mean, they got $80 billion in funding. Uh, it's all uh, people screaming and yelling like, oh my God, we're going to have tax auditors now. Everybody's going to be audited and whatever, which is crazy because I know that. Uh, you know, they're going to be hiring more people, but a lot of people are going to be retiring. A lot of the money is going into making better and more efficient systems, hopefully better, you know, customer service, which has really been lacking. So um, tell our, our viewers and our listeners, what are your thoughts on all this new funding for the IRS and right. how this will ultimately impact them in your opinion? Right. Well, keep in mind, there hasn't been an all, you know, the audit process has been non-existent for yeah. many, many years, right? And so, um, you know, in order for everyone to pay their fair share of tax, there is a benefit. Um, may not be uh, you or I or any of the businesses that are listening in today who, who are ones are um, getting um, getting audited, but I, yeah. I think that's a really important to be able to make sure that the rules are being um, complied with. The biggest thing I can see as a takeaway is just, um, from just talking to my colleagues. And that is, you know, it's been so difficult to be able to resolve any tax notice um, a, you know, a, at all, period, right? Lost checks. I mean, it's just, you know, we're finding that we're able to get through a little better now. You know, well, obviously we're heading into a tax season, so um, it will take some time for that. Um, but their systems seem to be um, working better. I'm hearing some positive experiences and the time that it takes to get a matter resolved is getting shorter. Um, you know, the, but I would still be cautious. I, I wouldn't send any checks. I would, I pay them online, um, you know, and, you know, you, you know, take advantage of, of accessing the information on your business account and your individual account online. Um, and, I, I recently heard that they're now going to even allow you to submit online um, some of your responses to some notices. Hmm. So they're hmm. slowly wow. but surely coming into a modern um, uh, computer system, which um, they, as you know, the joke is it hasn't been that way for decades. Everyone, I've been speaking with Mitch Gerstein. Mitch is a the most very prolific senior tax advisor at his Daner and Company regional accounting firm outside of Philadelphia. Mitch, what's his, his Daner's uh, website address? Um, it is www.isdanerllc.com, I S D A N E R L L C.com. Very good. Thank you so much for joining me. We will definitely be talking to you again in the future. We've just uh, lots more business tax issues that that we haven't even touched on this time, uh, but we'll get to them at some other point in time. So thanks, Mitch. It was great speaking with you. Thanks for having me. Everybody, you have been watching and listening to the Hartford Small Biz Ahead podcast. My name is Gene March. Thank you so much for spending time. If you need any advice or help or tips for running your business, please visit us at smallbizahead.com or sba.thehartford.com. Again, my name is Gene Marks. Thanks again for listening and watching. We will see you again next time. Take care.